Okay, so in today's video, I literally had a Zoom call with an entire brokerage in Detroit, and I really let them have it. You're really going to enjoy this. There's so many nuggets. It was a massive Q&A, if you will. So all kinds of things were thrown at me through the entire session. So you're going to want to listen to the whole thing. Go ahead and put your headphones in at the gym or while you're headed to show property or whatever, whenever you listen to podcasts or watch videos, be sure to put this one on your list. All right. So I'm just going to jump right in here. You guys know how good this is going to be. So smash the like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And here we go. Came back in 2008 and just started crushing it because it was so easy to sell properties back then, man. It was 50% off. You know, they're saying it's going to go down, going to go down, going to go down. And um, we may see that seasonal. We will see. We actually will see. We're already seeing prices level out and even come down a little bit. It happens every single year this time of year. Every single year. How it would be way crazy. Like, you think 2021 was crazy? Like, that's nothing compared to the underlying pent up demand we have right now. It was like contractors would come and say, hey, if you send me somebody to get their house painted or whatever, I'll give you a kickback. I'm like, I don't want the kickback. What I want is you to take care of the client. Then we're going to talk about what happened in the calls. Then we're going to go through market insights. Then we're going to go through Q&A for like an hour. There's no system that's going to be 100%. You know, that's going to convert 100%. Nothing. The object is to make friends in the market. That's how people choose their agent, who they feel like is their friend. So you got to get good at being a good friendship creator. We got a special guest here. I'm not going to, I'm going to be very respectful of his time. So Ricky, why don't you uh, take it away, man? And, uh, and we're uh, definitely excited to hear what you have to say. All right. Can y'all hear me? Yep. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. How you guys doing? Real good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. So what, and you guys are in Chicago. Where are you guys oh. at? That's uh, Chicago, man. Come on, Detroit. Mm. <laughs> like all that up there is the same to me. It's like, <laughs> uh, cool. Well, good to see you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys are all new, if you're experienced, which problems you're having in your business, all that good stuff. I don't know what you guys know about me, what you don't know about me and everything, but I'm here to help you. So uh, I've been in real estate since 2002. Um, I uh, crushed it as a really young early 20s guy made a bunch of money and then lost it all in the crash flipping houses and stuff and then i came back i actually went and worked on an oil rig roofed houses served tables sleeping in my car all that stuff came back in 2008 and just started crushing it because it was so easy to sell properties back then man it was 50 percent off i mean if you guys can imagine if, if prices even went down like 20 percent now how crazy easy it would be to sell real estate even though there was a lot of inventory um, it was cool because the buyers pretty much had their pick, you know, and trust me, you know, even if inventory got crazy high and prices came down, which just doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. But even if that happened, you might think, oh, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of buyers. Yes, trust me, there will be plenty of buyers that want to get in uh, at lower prices. It's so crazy because all we've heard about is crash, crash, crash for the last 18 months. And um, although we did see a little bit of correction there, um, prices are still up year over year. We're going to be up for the year. And uh, all the big entities, Realtor.com, Zillow, you know, Kay Schiller, um, you know, all of them, they've all came out with and revised their forecast to be uh, up big. You know, like Zillow just came out and revised it to 6% this year, 7% next year or something like that, which... The historical average is like 5% or something. So we're talking about some big years in terms of price increases. Um, transactions are down. Now, Now, what we have to think about is right now, transactions are literally at 2008 levels. Okay. We're, 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 we, th this is a crash. Like we're in a crash. Um, the only difference is we don't have any inventory and prices haven't went down with the crash. And the, all the mortgages are so solid out there as opposed to back in 2005, six and seven. So you know, all the people that have been on the sidelines, especially these YouTubers that say prices are going to go down 30%, they've been saying that forever, right? And if it was up to them, nobody would buy a house. You know, they were saying it last year. Well, now prices are up. Now, what about all the people that listen to them that didn't buy a house and now prices are up even higher? 
You know, what are they thinking? Right. And now the same thing's happening right now. You know, they're saying it's going to go down, going to go down, going to go down. And um, we may see that seasonal. We will see. We actually will see. We're already seeing prices level out and even come down a little bit. It happens every single year this time of year, every single year. And I would put that on social media and agents from New York and Miami and stuff. They say, oh, yeah, not our market. And I'll go right to the data and I'll show them how for the past two years, prices went down in the fall, even in 2021, the year of the boom. Prices came down a little bit. It wasn't a lot, but they 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 came down a couple thousand bucks and everywhere. Um, it's just the seasonalities of the market. So what you have to get really good at as a real estate agent is is um you have to get really good at at playing the the cycles. Okay. So we have yearly cycles and we have these big, huge market cycles, you know, like once every 10 years. Okay, and you got to get really good at playing the cycles and understanding how these cycles flow and how to take advantage of them. You know, so like in the fall, when things slow down, that's when you should be really prospecting. That should be your prospecting season. Where we're trying to build the database up to where when you go into the next selling season, your database is twice as big as it was last year. So that this selling season, you sell twice as much. Same thing when the market goes down the way that it has in terms of the number of transactions, you guys should be eating this up. Yeah, you're doing going to do less transactions, but who cares? It's like a rubber band. The more you pull it back, the harder it's going to pop. And like we have more pent up demand than we have ever seen for housing ever, 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 ever. And it comes from a lot of places. Uh, you know, one of the biggest places is honestly the people that have had these handcuffs on their on their arms, not not willing to sell because they're sitting on low interest rates. Guess what? They hate their house more and more and more and more every single day. They hate it, but they feel locked in. They want to move. They just can't. And that that's a rubber band that's just getting pulled and pulled and pulled. And when it releases, it's going to be like an atomic bomb going off. Inventory and buyers. Then on the other side, you have more 33-year-olds than we've ever seen like in decades right now. In 1990, we had a birth rate spike that was that was just massive. And that birth rate spike has led to more 33-year-olds this year than we've seen in our lifetime. And guess what? Those birth rates stay at that level for 16 years. And that's just 33-year-olds, not to mention 34, 35, as these people get older and older. So the average age of a first-time home buyer is 33 to 36. Okay? And 98% of millennials, they did a, they did a study, 98% of millennials want to become homeowners. So when you got 98% of millennials who want to become homeowners, there's more 33-year-olds right now than we've ever seen in our life. And that's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as they become 34. Then the next age is 33. Then they're 35. Well, then these people are 34. Then another batch of 33s. It's just, it's so massive. You can't even imagine. And we don't even know it in terms of the amount of hist historic pent-up demand for housing because of interest rates. Like we're Like we're going along and we're thinking, oh, you know, it's, you know, the market was this and now it's this because of rates. But you guys don't even realize, like if rates would even just stay around like five, how it would be way crazy. Like you think 2021 was crazy? Like that's nothing compared to the underlying pent up demand we have right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. So when you think about the long tail of demand for the next couple of decades, it's unreal. And you really have so much job security. It's not even funny. Now, once you realize that it's up to you to go out and build a foundation of a real database of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who know who you are, that, you know, that you, that you have a system on the back end where they never forget who you are, that you can then, you know, build this business that's super residual where deals are just falling in your lap, right? That's what you want. You want to build your database so big and you have a system in place where nobody forgets who you are, that at some point deals just fall in your lap. And you never have to prospect another day in your life. First year I made a million bucks was 2017. I never prospected a day after that ever. And I continued to make a million every year after because of the systems I had in place to stay in touch with people and the database that I built up. And really part of it was just being a, being more focused on the person, not the property, like making the human, the priority over the transaction. Um, you know, because through that, they're going to love you, but then you're also going to do a lot more deals, you know, when you really understand what's happening behind the scenes of them wanting to buy or sell a house. 
you know, a lot of people just kind of brush over the reason. It's like, no, let's sit here for a second and go really deep on why they're wanting to buy or sell something so we can really understand what's happening behind the scenes psychologically. And then you've got a client for life. You know, you're there anyway. So anyway, um, got back in in 2008, learned all this, started crushing it. And by 2014, I was selling 100 properties a year. And then, um, you yeah, know, I was the number one REMAX agent in Alabama for a long time. And uh, sold 100 properties a year ever since. It was eight years in a row. Single agent, one assistant, number one agent in my entire county out of all out of all agents and teams. And um, then in 2017, I kind of got a little bored with that. I just was like, well, you know, let me start trying to teach people how to do this. You know, so I started speaking, writing, coaching. I became the world's first completely free real estate coach. And um it's been a it's been exciting. I've now I travel and speak a lot and just try to say everything I just said to you guys, you know, and <laughs> over a course of an hour long talk and um helped we've we've helped thousands, tens of thousands of agents, probably hundreds of thousands of agents we've helped. You know, the overall um mission is to help reduce the failure rate in the industry. You know, there's so many agents that quit. It's like there's no reason to quit. There's there I mean leads are humans. Right? Leads are everywhere. You know, it's like, oh, I don't have any leads. Well, no, there's there how many people are in your market? What's the population? One million? We got one million leads right there. You can just get their information for a penny and call them. People are stuck on these are warm leads over here because I paid a thousand bucks for them. And these are cold leads or what it's like, no, they're all the same leads. The people that you bought for a thousand bucks is the same person you could have got for a penny. Actually, the one for a penny is better because it's ex the exact person you want to do business with, you know, property owner. You know, think about it like this. We're all going to make money at seven o'clock at night, right? Right. People are looking at properties at seven o'clock at night. So we're all making money at seven o'clock at night. The only decision you got to make is, is am I going to be the one showing property at seven o'clock at night? Or am I going to be the one at the house eating dinner, chilling, relaxing, no worries at seven o'clock at night because eight of my 21 listings are getting shown. You know what I mean? Like it's all about efficiency. That's why I was able to sell a hundred properties a year as a single agent for so long, kind of effortlessly, if you will, because efficiency, right? And leverage and, and understanding that. That's why you're not going to see me do YouTube for real estate agents or Facebook ads or uh, Boomtown leads or Zillow or any of that stuff because that's buyers for the most part. Why don't I want buyers? I want, I want sellers. I want leverage. I want a life. You know what I mean? So I could get into all kinds of stuff, guys. That's just a little bit of background on me, how I operate, how I think. I think the best use of our time since it's late in the day. So you guys are there. So you're on Central Time? Oh, we're on Eastern. Eastern, yeah. Oh, so you guys are even later. It's 6 o'clock there, 6.13 or whatever. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, it's late in the day for you guys, late in the day for me. I normally shut down at 5 o'clock. I'm done. So this is overtime for me. But I'm happy to do it, happy to be here. Let's just do some Q&A. If you guys, you know, what's what problems you have in your business since we have just a small group and what value can I bring to you guys? You know, what are you having problems with? I think that's the best way to do it. Hey, Ricky. Hey. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I've listened to your some of your coaching. I'm listening to your book right now. Uh, I really like a lot of the things that you do. I know that you're really big on your email list. Mm. Um, how many people were on your email list before it really started working for you? Well, the first year I did it, I picked up a thousand people, um, in the first year and, uh, I sold 20 properties that year. So from the email know, got, list or mostly? yeah, I mean, I was, I was emailing them. Yeah. It was all email. So oh. yeah, I got, um, actually to be honest, what happened was, is back then you could actually really, it was the wild, wild west back then. Okay. So I literally bought a million emails and I emailed every one of them and a thousand of them responded and 20 of them bought. These were cold emails. So you can't do that in today's world, right? You can't do it at all. Not even close. They'll shut you down immediately. Back then you could do it, but that that's what happened. Um, emailed a million people, a thousand responded, 20 bought. And then the thousand who responded, even though they did, whoever didn't buy, they still stayed on my list. I, they still got my content my weekly emails and stuff you know so it's funny because one of the people on that on that list the 20 that bought that was it was the very first property i sold coming back into the market and all i've done is the weekly email right i don't do client appreciation parties check on them on the birthdays and nothing 
I just do the weekly email, keep them informed. But where the real magic happens is during the deal, giving them great customer service. If you can make the deal go smooth and really go over the top during the deal, they'll never use another agent. Chances are really low. So that's kind of where I won. You know, it wasn't that I, I went above and beyond in between the deals. It was that I went above and beyond during the deal. And then I did the weekly email. So they never forgot that feeling. But what's so cool is, is last year, we actually sold that first property that I sold when I came back. You know, I emailed those million people, you know, 20 people responded, you know, and bought. Well, well, a thousand responded. Okay. A thousand responded. 20 of them bought something that year. And out of the 20 that bought, the very first one, her name is Lori. She bought a condo on the beach for 200 grand. Um, now I didn't stay in touch. I didn't, I mean, she just on my weekly email, literally last year, that was 2008 last year, she called and we listed and we sold it for like 550 or 600 or something like that. But isn't that cool? You know, like the whole full circle thing, but that weekly email is like the safety net on the back of your business that never allows anyone to forget who you are, you know, how you treated them. It kind of keeps that bug in their ear and it's a reminder, you know, your name in their inbox every Wednesday or every Thursday, whatever day you decide. Um, to me, I, can, I haven't been able to find a better way to do this in terms of making sure nobody forgets who I am, because I know 90% of the people on my email list are going to see that in their inbox, you know, versus social media, you know, five or 10% of the people following me will see my content. Um, you know, mail is kind of expensive. Like, I mean, I'm happy to like, listen, if you guys feel like there's a better way to stay in touch with people, but I just haven't been able to find it that it's the most efficient, cost efficient, effective, you know, way to do it. Today, my email list is 19,000, 7,500, open it up every week. And we still sell a hundred properties every week. My dad handles the day to day so that I can do things like this. I stepped out of production and, and, um, glory to God, like you guys don't want to be real estate agents forever. I can assure you. <laughs> Um, just for a question, sorry. You said that you, um, when you're working with someone that you make sure that you they feel really special and you have a good connection with them. Do you do a special personalized gift for everyone for closing? No, or? no, no, I don't. I don't. You know, like everybody has different love languages, right? And like mine is like, take care of me. You know, it's like when lenders used to come to me and say, hey, you, you know, use me or whatever. Like, what do you want from me? Like, how can I get your business? And I'm like, or can I pay you a referral fee or something? I mean, no, I don't I don't want the money. It was like contractors would come and say, hey, if you send me somebody to get their house painted or whatever, I'll give you a kickback. I'm like, I don't want the kickback. What I want is you to take care of the client. You know, it's like, I don't care about gifts and money. I want, I want people to be taken care of. And so that's how I operated. That's just kind of like my love language. Like, I want them to have a great experience through the deal. So it comes down to more, not so like um, thoughtful, you know, gifts, but more so answer my phone. Okay. And like stayed on top of the deal for them. When things were happening in the deal, I was fixing those situations immediately to where it didn't turn into a big situation. Right. I was negotiating the best deals for them. I was always taking their side. Like if they had, if they, if they, you know, if we're in the middle of a negotiation and they wanted to do something and personally, I didn't feel like it might've been the best move. I'm still going to, you know, say yes, like that's what you want. And then I go to war for my client, no matter if I think it's right or wrong, you know, that's customer service, right? So many times you see agents talk their clients out of deals because they personally wouldn't do the deal. It's like, this isn't your deal, bro. This is your client's deal. This this is their deal. They want to do the deal. Don't talk them out of the deal. You know, later on down the road, they walk out of the they walk away from that deal. And later on down the road, they're like, man, I wish I'd have bought that. You know, it's like, don't don't talk people out of stuff, right? Help them do what they want to do. So I've got a a, a question. I mean, and, and we this kind of goes back to what we discussed a couple of weeks ago when we had our, you know, one on one. Um, you know, how you you know as of right now we're you know we're on perfect storm we got you know drips going and all that stuff but um i know you're a firm believer and and i and i think you're 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 right of how um the weekly newsletter is way more effective than drips because everybody just that's what people are expecting they're getting drips from 15 other agents and that kind of differentiates yourself um as far as the 
like the structure of your of your of your newsletter like um what does that look like oh man dude i'm glad you asked i'll actually show you guys right now what i'm working on this will actually be available here i don't know if i showed did i show you the four uh the four week template things yeah i didn't know if those were were out yet or not did i show those to you i i saw like the very rough beginning draft of it yeah yeah uh let me see let me see if i can get that pulled up right here let's see where is that here we go bam all right so i can give you guys the link for this but this is what we're working on right here so we're working on like a four-week template so it used to be this just the general weekly email and this was kind of just like what was in there where you know agents just come in and kind of just plug and play with this uh, this kind of general template. But now what we've went to, since it's been really hard for people to come up with content, what I've done is I've built like a four week template. So week one, week two, week three, week four, right? And so week one is stats of the month. Week two is restaurant of the month. Week three is deal of the month. Week four is news of the month. So if we go to like stats of the month, you know, what they do is they'll put, they're, they're going to customize this with your stuff. So your name, your organization, your phone number, your logo, and this yellow is, is just training material that you delete, you know, but it, this tells you about the subject. Most people have the mistake of, of using it. Like they try to use the subject to hook people in when the subject should be branded. Like mine's Gulf Coast market report and the date. And then I use the preheader text to be the hook. That way the subject is branded because if you're trying to hook them on the subject, they could get lost because the subject isn't the same. And you're not really branding anything, right? And then it's a different picture here, something local in the area. And then boom, average sales price in your area, number of transactions, number of new listings. And um, you give your expert opinion on that. You And then you put links here for new condos, new homes, search, whatever, right? And then you've got restaurant of the month where you, you put a, a restaurant here, you give your experience of the restaurant, um, you know, what happened when you went there and then, you know, say, Hey, reply back for this email for a chance to win a gift card, you know, hundred dollars, $50, whatever. You've got all your listings right here, all this stuff. Then you got deal of the month, like your favorite listing of the month. And then you got news, like could be a development, could be uh, a bridge coming in, could be a festival happening, whatever. So this kind of gives everybody kind of a foundation of how they could do this really easy. I'll put this link right here. If you guys want to utilize this, if you go here, they will go ahead and create a custom template for you. And then when these templates are done, like they're going to be done this week, they should be in the, uh, on the website. You'll be able to utilize those four. And I'm going to do a training on them as well. Oh, and get this. Here's what you guys need to do right here. Let me give you this link. This is going to be career changing right here. Okay, right here. This, now that is an all-day virtual workshop I'm doing via Zoom next Friday on the 18th. Now, I'm going to take you through your morning. I'm going to take you through going on MLS, looking at the hot sheet. We're going to role play. Well, then I'm going to teach you how to find your numbers. If you don't have numbers, then we're going to role play. Then we're going to make calls together. And I already have 1,100 agents registered for this. So I'm shooting for 2,000. We're going to make calls together. Then we're going to talk about what happened in the calls. Then we're going to go through market insights. Then we're going to go through Q&A for like an hour. So this is going to be a big, big, big training event. And I'm actually going to make everyone make calls with us and make sure everybody has everything they need. So it's going to be a really, really good training. So, and also anybody who invites, so Derek, you can invite the five people here. <laughs> like anybody that, that invites five people who actually register, I want I want re, like email me or DM me on Instagram so that I can put you on a list to be on another Zoom call because I want to kind of reward the people that are referring this out. So if you guys know five agents or other brokerages or whatever, that you can invite to this thing, do it because I'm trying to get word of mouth going and then do a Zoom call with the people that referred so we can, you know, I can build a relationship deeper with you guys and see what I can do to help you guys, you know, deeper, what questions you're having, what problems you're having, all that. Because the Zoom call, there'll be like a thousand plus agents, I'm sure. And <laughs> it'll be kind of hard to answer every single person's question. For sure. That's the cool thing about this Zoom though, right? Like 
there's like five or six of us here so you guys got me more more, more than that but yeah here we go well i can't see everybody oh, okay here we cool. go we're, we're, we're at 10 or 12 <laughs> but, what, uh, what else you guys got man what uh anybody else having problems in their business because like i'm i'm like the dr phil of real estate yeah ask away guys because yeah i mean i'm i i can sit here and 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 ask questions to ricky for the next three I want, yeah i, I want to know what you guys is problems you're having you know in your business where's your um where's your bottleneck in your business you know is for, it hey ricky for my Yo. i'm damon for mine um i kind of don't go out of uh my circle so i need to we used to do a newsletter like all the ages we used to do it at the office and then we kind of faded away from it a little bit and so we went to just doing emails and i know that i stopped doing my emails a while ago i still have their email addresses but i was getting frustrated with only like the same group of people should i go back to my old list and just make a combo list with everybody or do you differentiate your list as far as these are the people that i really know and these are the people who i kind of know or do you just do all of them at one time you mean send two different emails out yeah, like when you do your newsletter mm -hmm. and your emails, are you doing the same list or are you doing two different sets of people? So the thing is, is about simplicity, right? And and scalability. Okay, so think about it for a second. If we're if we're going to send out two emails, now we're doing twice the work, mm -hmm. right? Or if we have five different lists and we want to send a different email out to this subdivision and that subdivision and these people and those people, you're, not, you're just doing five times the work when you could all when you could send them all just the same thing. Here's a great here's here's my restaurant of the month. Here's the the stats of the month, along with all the new listings. Here's the the best listing I can find, the best investment opportunity out there, or the or the or the, the 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 coolest house or the most expensive house or whatever. Here's uh here's the festival that's happening next month that's gonna be really cool, or a de new development that's coming into town or whatever. Like I don't know how you would separate it. You know what I mean? Like the same stuff can go out to all the same people, whether they're buying, they're selling, whether they're hot, cold, whether you they ghosted you, they you showed them five properties and they ghosted you five years ago. You know how many you know how many buyers I sold to that ghosted me that I sold to three to five years later that came back because of the weekly email? I didn't like they ghosted me and I'm like, okay, whatever. They kept getting the email and then they call me five years later and say, Hey, remember me? And I'm like, Yeah, I remember your ass. And they buy something from me. I mean, it happens so much. That's why I say it's a safety net where, yeah, you're not going to get everybody. And listen, guys, like you're going to lose people using my method to other agents who are way more personalized, who do the client events and do the happy birthdays, right? You're going to lose some, but. You're, they're going to lose some to you too. See, the thing is, is there's no system that's going to be 100%, you know, that's going to convert 100%, nothing. So I'm like, how can I have the largest database, right? And 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 Because it, it's got to be about quantity at some point. A lot of you guys spend a lot of time, you know, dealing with one or two buyers, you know, I'm giving them great quality, quality, quality. It's like, okay, that's great. But when is it going to be about quantity? Because if you if if you want a massive business like you say you do, then at some point there you got to have a large volume. And you're not going to have a large volume messing around with two buyers over here, two buyers over there. Right? You, when I ask a, a buyer or a sell, when I ask an agent how many active buyers and sellers they're working with, the most common answer is four. Right? I didn't ask you guys that because I want you to think about my answer and you guys know what your answer is of how many active buyers and sellers you're working with right now. But the most common answer is four. Well, statistically, that is 0.8 deals. So guess what? You got four buyers or sellers. It means you're working on nothing. You need 15 to 20 if you're going to close one deal a week. Write that down because 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers equals one deal a week. 25 plus is two deals a week. And trust me, I did it for eight years in a row, two, two deals a week. Two, two, two every week for eight years because I had 25 plus active buyers and sellers on a list at all times. And I've, I've coached so many agents who keep 15 to 20 and they close one deal a week, one deal a week, one deal a week. It's as easy as this, guys.
Easy as this. Your pipeline's not big enough. You think it is because you're working with five people that might do something. And statistically, that's one deal. So back to your question, Damon, it's uh, you don't want to add jobs for yourself. It's kind of like for me, when I do, when I'm thinking client events, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I don't want to have to do a client event every year. That's a whole new job. That's like that's like saying I want to call my clients once a year. Although although all these things you're talking about are good, it's still adding a job. It, think about it like this. Can you do every single marketing activity out there? No way, right? No way. But we try to, right? We try to do Facebook and Instagram and cold call and open houses and client events and email mark. We try to do all these things. And guess what? We, we don't end up great at any of them. Right. And we still don't get to all the marketing. So the reason why we try to do all these marketing things is because we think, oh, we're leaving money on the table over there. and We're leaving money on the table over here. And the, the, the very the top, top producers, what they do really what they're really good at is saying, OK, I'm going to go all in with this one thing. And I'm OK with the business that I might lose not doing all these other things over here. See what I'm saying? Because yeah. your cup, your cup is only so big, which means you can only handle so many deals at one time. So think of, think about what your what your number would be, right? So let's just think about it for a second. Let's say you, right, as a single agent, I don't know all of your situations, but let's just say as a single agent, could you handle 50 active listings and say 30 more pending? Can you, can you, could you handle 80, 80 deals, 50 being active and 30 more being pending? Could you handle that? Ooh, mm -mm. no okay so where's the breaking point right is it 20 active listings and 10 pendings is it is it 25 actives and 15 pendings right so there, there's a number is what i'm saying and everybody's number is different okay and that's the size of your cup everybody's cup is a different size mine was massive i there was one point i had 70 listings and um total Right. And like 25 or something were pending at one time. That was the highest I ever got was like 70 listings. And then I remember there was a time, I think it was like 2000, I don't know, 18, 19, something like that. I had 34 pending deals, something like that. It was like 30 something pending deals. And that was the highest I ever got was like 30 something pending deals. And I didn't have that many listings because things were selling pretty quick. And uh, I, uh, that was pretty much my breaking point, right? Like I was pretty much, that was pretty much as many, much as I can handle. But the point is, is that when we're looking at marketing and we're looking at lead gen and we're looking at all these things, what you have to realize is that, or, or what you have to think about is that, okay, if I were working on 100% capacity on each avenue, if I was maximizing Instagram, if I was maximizing Zillow, if I was maximizing open house, if I was maximizing all these things, could I even handle all the business that would come in from that? At, from all those avenues put together? No. Right? And so then you start kind of, we got to start checking things off the, off the list. And we need to get down to the, the one or two things that if you went all in and had 100% capacity on, would, would more than likely have you at your 100% capacity of how many deals you could handle. And so I realized this really early on that if I can only handle so much, then why am I going to do all this stuff if I can just make calls and do a weekly email? And that keeps me at my, my full capacity. Cause all I ever wanted to do really was close two deals a week and make a million bucks a year. That's, that was all, that was as high as I ever wanted to go. I didn't really have any aspirations to go any higher than that. Um, so that's kind of what you have to think about, but don't give yourself another job. Two emails is doubling the workload, doing an event every year. Now your clients expect that every year. Now you have to do that every year calling your clients, you know, once a year, it's like another job. What I want is how can I have a simple activity that I do that takes 15 minutes a week that just brings me two deals a week and they just fall on my lap. That's the dream, right? And that's what the weekly email is. So if you prospect, 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 you get all the emails and you're, you're, you're working and you're closing deals, you're having great years and all that. Over the years, you're going to develop this database. You're going to have been doing this weekly email for so long.
that at some point you don't have to prospect anymore. I told you guys a while ago, like I cut the prospecting off back in 17 when I made a meal for the first year and I made a meal every year since no prospecting, no social media, no open houses, no checking on clients. None of that. It was just one thing. Weekly email, 15 minutes a week, go out, close two deals, 15 minutes a week, go out, close two deals. That's what you want. And when you get to that place in your business, people aren't interviewing three agents. They're calling one agent, you, because they did a deal with you already. They were referred by somebody or whatever the case may be. Get it? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, ma'am. And uh, and and I'm I, and and just so you know, Ricky, where they everybody here hears your name every single week at these meetings because I'm always uh always name dropping you, and uh and what your method and and in fact for you know that's what we have implemented here uh, at the office. We got two different kind of like daily operation systems that people can plug into and, and yours is one of them. So, um, but uh, essentially like what your what your coaching is, is circle prospecting using that zero to diamond script. I don't, I don't know, man. Like honestly, expireds are my favorite. Oh really? And you may be thinking, Oh God, expireds do 15 million people are calling expireds. What I really love is like one year old expireds, six month old expires, two year old expireds five-year-old expireds, my absolute fave. Because what happens is, is when you call these people and, you know, you say, hey, you know, I see you were trying to sell this property. What, what happened, you know, what happened with that? You go from a cold caller to a detective to them now trying to help you solve the, solve the mystery. Now they're trying to help you. So it's like, hey, Mr. Johnson, hey, Mr. Johnson, Ricky Kruth over here, whatever realty and whatever area, how you doing today? Cool, me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it gorgeous? Listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I see you were trying to sell this house at one point. I was just trying to figure out whatever happened with that. It doesn't matter if that house sold. It doesn't matter if they you know, still have it or if they rented it or whatever. It doesn't matter because we're just trying to use that property as an excuse to get to know the person to see what it is we could do to help them. Well, <laughs> it turns into these amazing conversations because they're just they're now they're trying to help you. They're like, oh yeah, we sold it or we still have it, or here's the story behind it, or we moved over. And it's like, great. Where'd you move to? How do you like it? You, you do you like do you like rental properties? Are you you gonna move in anytime soon again? Do you have an agent you normally work with? You just have such incredible conversations. And with it being old expired, it just gives you such a great avenue of conversation, a great reason you know, to reach out. And I've just really grown to love those old expireds. I actually did a, um, I'll put the link here. I did a full demo on, on old expireds, how to go back 10 years worth. Um, I'll grab the link for you. How to go back 10 years worth. Oh, dang. Uh, scripts. And I think I actually called a few of them live on this, on this training. I'll put it right here for you guys. That was just really, really good training, but I, I did a, it was basically a demo on Red X for how to go back 10 years worth and then scripts. And then I, I believe I made a couple calls there at the end. Awesome. And, and, and really, if, if so and I, unless things have changed or I'm wrong on this, like when you're any, any kind of dial that you're doing your whole, if you can get the appointment, get the appointment, but what you're really going for is the email so that you can put them on your list and then just keep following up every single week forever. Correct. Uh, yeah. I mean, the number one ultimate goal is to find out if in fact they're looking to buy or sell, right. And why they're looking to buy or sell. And if they have an agent they're working with on it, that's the ultimate like step one of the whole thing. Then then based on that, then it moves over to, you know, uh, you know, I'm, sh you know, do you have an agent to work with? No, great. I'm sure at some point you're going to buy or sell something in the future. I love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I just stayed in touch with you? All right, great. What's a good email for you? So it does get there, but it's kind of a, it goes through a path, you know, where I really want to understand if they're looking to buy or sell now, and if not, do they have an agent they might work with? And if not, I'd love to stay in touch. And if they do, I'd love to stay in touch. But yeah, man, like if you could, if you could pick up, NAR did a study, right? And and basically 30, 
three percent of people at the end of a closing said that they picked their agent because they had they they had a friend in the business with a great reputation. Okay, wasn't because they found them online or uh, brokerage or uh, or you know mailers or whatever. It was that they had a friend in the business. Now, how did they become friends? They made it become friends through social media or mailers or cold call or met them around town or knew their mom or whatever. However, they came in contact with them, had a conversation, and now they feel like they have a friend in the business. You guys get it? The object is to make friends in the market. That's how people choose their agent, who they feel like is their friend. So you got to get good at being a good friendship creator. Okay. And if you can make five new friends in the market that give you their email addresses and you do that for five years, you got 6,000 over a 250 working day year. You got 6,000 people that are getting a weekly email that you talk to that gave you their information that own property in the, in the area or whatever. You are more than likely the top agent in your market at that point. See, if somebody would have told me all this from day one, I would have been number one a long time before I was. I had to learn all this on my own. And now I'm just giving it to you on a silver platter. Chris Curtis, you look very studious and quiet. So I got to hear yeah, from you I, before we leave here. Yeah. Well, in fact, I, I'm just taking some bunch of notes and, and also trying to multitask. I appreciate the time, Ricky. Yeah, I follow you on, on Instagram and have for a number of years. Uh, Derek and I are connected through a, a fellow mastermind group that we, we go down to in Arizona a couple times a year. And, and so I really appreciate the opportunity to hear some of the things. Like Ricky knows Josh. Good. Oh yeah, yeah, Josh Smith. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, do the beats. <laughs> yeah, he 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 be intense. So. Yeah, he's a good. I, he's he's I, good people. I run a, a, a small franchise operation, small-ish franchise operation, but I'm also still in personal production. So some of the things that you're hitting on is just it's kind of like keep it simple and don't overthink it. And I, I've already sent your link that you gave us in the chat to a couple of my agents who are interested in trying to get their stuff off the ground. So they'll be attending your, your live. Yeah. Call it's going to be the Super Bowl of prospecting. So I'm excited yeah. about it. That's yeah, awesome. Anybody else have any questions or anything else I can do to help you guys? All right. Cool. Good deal. Well, I hope something I said really hit home. And uh, kind of changes a little bit of your uh, philosophy around your business. I hope hopefully you can see more long term, see the big picture of what this thing could really be. I hope the very first remarks about how much uh, pent up demand we have was uh, something maybe you've heard that maybe you hadn't, but we have it, the market's just so so good. This is this is as this is as bad as it's going to get, right? This is it. This it's just going to get better and better and better and better. There's going to be more and more and more opportunities. So. Really go all in, dig your heels in and uh, make a stand, you know, to really build that database, do that weekly email and um, let me know what I could do to help. Um, I hope to see you guys on the workshop next Friday, but uh, you guys can always reach out to me on Instagram. I do my best to answer all those messages and um, good luck. Good luck to you guys. Thank you, man. I really, really Thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for, uh, I'll for joining. I'll 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 my pleasure. You guys have a good rest of your night. See you soon. See you, man. Bye-bye. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs. And these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple bands on the